welcome back to another video here upon the old YouTube channel. And welcome back to another discography review. Today we are going to be looking at one of the all-time greatest classic rock bands of the 70s and 80s. And that is Boston. Quite an interesting band because they are a band that have the highest of highs when it comes to albums and music. And the lowest of lows when it comes to music. So it should be a pretty interesting review and take on them. So if all the bullshit out of the way, let's get straight into it. So, in 1976, Boston released, of course, as we all know, their legendary uh, self-titled debut album. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this album because it's been talked about uh, before by many, many people on the line and just in general before. So, I'll keep it short. But this is one of my favorite albums of all time. It's in my top five favorite albums of all time. One of the best-selling debut albums for a very good reason. It's just well done. The production is awesome. All the instruments sound nice. When you're talking about that awesome guitar tone from Tom Scholz, love his guitar tone, always have. Brad Delp's vocals on here are awesome. You have great songs like Peace of Mind, Hitch a Ride, Rock and Roll Band, Something About You. Every song on here is a classic. It's an eight-song album, and all eight songs are fantastic. So give this one a spin, even if you've listened to it thousands and thousands of times. Because even though I've heard all of these songs thousands and thousands of times, I never get tired of them. And it will always be one of my favorite albums in general, for sure. So those are going to be my thoughts on their debut album. Of course, when it comes to Boston, a lot of people like to focus on the debut album. There are other albums and songs in general in their discography that are pretty well liked amongst Boston fans and rock fans in general. But if we're being honest, it's really their debut that is the highlight of their discography and the one thing that a lot of people pay attention to. But I would argue their second album, Don't Look Back from 1978, is pretty close to being as good as the debut. Of course, nothing will ever top this when it comes to Boston. We all know that, but this album is an awesome album. A great follow-up to an awesome album, in my opinion, with tons of great stuff on here. You know, the fourth song off of here, A Man I'll Never Be, is probably their best ballad they've ever done. And my favorite song off of this particular album. But of course, the title track is great. Party, feeling satisfied, it's easy. So many great stuff right here. The only thing I don't like about this album is I'm not crazy about the second track off of this album, The Journey, which is a little noise instrumental interlude that segues into It's Easy. Those who know me know I'm not really a huge fan of noise interludes like that that segue into songs. I would rather the song to kick off where it starts. But it is what it is. It's still a fantastic album regardless and pretty close to being as good as that debut album. Just almost there, but not quite. But nothing, like I said, will ever quite top it. But at least we have this great, great album uh, besides their debut album and their discography. So those are going to be my thoughts on Don't Look Back. Even though there are six albums in Boston's discography, I would argue there's only really one other good album besides the first two. And it took a long, long time for it to come out. Don't Look Back came out in 1978. Their third album, Third Stage, came out in the next decade, in 1986. As we all know, Tom Scholz, the guitar player and songwriter, is the main driving force of Boston, and he likes to take his time. The only reason Don't Look Back came out when it did is because after the big success of the debut, the record label obviously wanted to follow up pretty quickly. So that's why that came out relatively quickly, but still pretty good in my opinion. Third stage took a long, long time to come out, and as Boston went along, the albums took way even longer to come out than the previous one, and their quality unfortunately really, really uh, sunk low as the albums went along, which is pretty interesting considering with all the time they had, you think they could come out with a really, really great album, but it's not the case. As far as first states goes, I really uh, dig this one. Obviously not as much as the first two, but it has some great songs like Amanda, which is one of their biggest hits, as a matter of fact. And Cool The Engines is great, We're Ready is great, A New World. Overall, I would say this is a pretty good album. Not as consistent start to finish as the first two. Obviously, there's some noise interludes here and there, and some other regular songs that I really don't care for just a whole lot. 
But overall, I would give this album a very, very positive review, just like uh, the previous two. And the first three albums are just a trilogy of really solid albums for them, in my personal opinion. And I give positive reviews to all of them. So those are going to be my thoughts on the third stage. So their fourth album, Walk On, took the same amount of time it took from Don't Look Back to Third Stage. This one came out eight years later, I believe, from Third Stage in 1990, 1994. But I could be fucking up the math because I am terrible at math. But regardless, this album, I would say out of the last three Boston albums, is the better one. But like I said, starting with the debut... The albums just got worse and worse and worse as they went along. So obviously their latest album is going to be my least favorite. But as far as Walk On, it's a decent passable album. It's not terrible, terrible by any means. But none of the songs really stand out to me and none of the performances really stand out to me. This is the only album that they have that does not feature any vocals from Brad Delp. Fran Cosmo is the singer, and I think Fran Cosmo is a good singer. Of course, nobody is going to match Brad Delp at all. Brad Delp is just one of the all-time greatest, but I would say Fran Cosmo does a pretty good job. And if the material for this album was a lot, lot better written, I feel like Fran Cosmo could have done just as great of a job as Brad Delp did for the first three albums, but... As we all know, the material on Walk On just really, really uh, shit the bed compared to the first three albums. And unfortunately, it would only continue to go worse. Which is unfortunate since Boston was a very, very promising band that probably could have been as big as Led Zeppelin or the Beatles or the Rolling Stones or one of the all-time greats. But, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, it just happened the way it did. But as far as Walk On goes, it's a passable album and not one I'm ever really going to seek out. Unless I'm doing another Boston review or reviewing this for Album Review Saturday or one of my other shows. So those are going to be my thoughts on Walk On. So their next album, Corporate America, came out in 2001 or 2002, somewhere around there. And this is the only Boston album that does not appear on Spotify. And I use Spotify to listen to a lot of my music since I don't have a whole lot of CDs or records. So I might mainly use Spotify. So I had to go look up Corporate America on the YouTube. And I was wondering for a while why this wasn't on Spotify. Because I think this is a much better album than their next album, Live, Love, and, Love and Hope. But after doing further research, I believe there was, you know, a bit of a... the argument i guess you would call it that with the record label over something of this album i don't know the exact details but i know something with the record label happened because it said on wikipedia that tom shows how to pull this album from shelves and they stopped pressing it but it is what it is it's still not a fantastic album at all it's better than their next album but it's worse than walk on as they just kept going downhill my main issue with this album is i feel like there's a little bit too much cooks in the kitchen because there are four different vocalists on here yeah, Brad Delp coming back to do some vocals. Fran Cosmo is on a song. Anthony Cosmo, which I'm sure is related to Fran, is on this album too. And there you have a female vocalist, Kimberly. I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, but she's on a couple tracks. And, you know, I don't mind albums at all that have multiple, multiple vocalists. In fact, one of my favorite albums of all time I have sitting somewhere around here it is. One of my favorite albums of all time is this album, Weather Systems, by the band Anathema. And there's two main vocalists for the band, the male and the female. And I really love that dynamic for Anathema in the band. And I feel like if you had a dynamic with Brad Delp and the Kimberly go Girl, could have been pretty, pretty interesting when it came to the vocalists. But just too many, in my opinion. And one thing I noticed looking at the personnel as Boston's career with a lot is Tom Scholz the, uh, decided, or I don't know if he fully decided, but a pretty much situation came up where he started doing a lot more for all of these albums. When you look at Boston, the very first Boston album at the personnel on it, there's pretty much one member for each instrument for the most part. Tom Scholz does some other stuff. But when you look at Corporate America and the next album, he's playing drums on a bunch of songs, he's playing bass, he's playing guitar. Which, of course, is not an issue at all because he does some great performances on all the instruments he's on, even keyboards too. But it's one thing I found very, very interesting whenever I was looking at the personnel between the Boston albums. I guess a lot of people didn't have faith in Boston and he just had to uh, do a bunch of the instruments himself. I don't know what the situation is, but I found that pretty interesting. 
But as far as Corporate America goes, like with Walk On, not an album I'm ever really going to seek out unless I have to review it for a specific video. So those are going to be my thoughts on that one. So Boston released their very last album, Live, Love, and Hope, in 2013, I believe. And, you know, me and Delta here, we don't agree on a whole lot. But one thing we both can agree on is that this is easily the worst Boston album. Ain't that right? Oh, there you go. Walking away right when I'm talking to you. But Live, Love, and Hope, you know, it's okay for what it is, I guess. But it's never an album I'm ever really going to seek out. You know, this album has a lot of vocals from Brad Delp on it after he passed away, which, you know, I don't have a problem with like a lot of other people would because, you know, tons of stuff from past uh, band members and such have been released after they have passed away. So not really a huge issue for me like a lot of people that I've heard about on the live, but still an album that's just okay at best. Nothing too memorable on here, just like the last two albums I talked about, Walk On and Corporate America. Like with Corporate America, lots of different vocalists on there. Probably should have just been one or two, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, Boston just really, really went downhill. And it's a shame they couldn't live up to the success of the first album. And to some degree, the second album, Don't Look Back. But at least we have these two albums to listen to. And 50%, if not 75% of Verge Stage is pretty good, I would say. So those are my thoughts on their last album, Live, Love, and Hope. So, those are going to be my thoughts on Boston's whole discography. If you're a big Boston fan like I am, or at least for the first few albums, be sure to let me know your thoughts on their whole discography down in the comments below. Do you enjoy the first albums as much as I do? Do you like some of the later albums uh, more than I do? Let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments below, because I would be very interested to hear them. And if y'all enjoyed this discography review here, follow the old YouTube, but please consider subscribing to this channel and also consider giving me a follower over yonder on the Instagram. I would highly appreciate the support from all of y'all quite a bit, and I got a lot more wicked shit coming out on both platforms. So those are going to be my thoughts on Boston. Like I just said, once you're done watching, blast their first two albums to make your day a wicked one, and then go out and kick some ass.